It's showtime for Björn Höcke, the strongman of the far-right AFD party. And he gets a rock star welcome in Gera, in the German region of Thuringia. The intelligence services may have his party under surveillance here, but it still tops the polls. So no one's worried about getting banned. All the other parties who are actually a cartel are in favor of a more European Union, more renewable energy and more migration. That's why we are the only opposition force worthy of the name in this country. In this East German region, where many people feel they've been forgotten by traditional parties, a large number make no apologies now. They openly support the far right. The Social Democrats, the government's environmentalists who throw money out the window, they are the ones who should be banned because they ruin the country and lead our people straight into the wall. If being far right means living my life as I've done so far at 68, that is studying, working, paying my taxes, never doing anything wrong, then being far right or being a Nazi cannot be something wrong. But this time around, the AFD meeting in Gera is less peaceful than usual. Outside the hall, hundreds have come to protest against the far-right party, which is under new suspicion of plotting to deport asylum seekers, foreigners without proper residency papers, and even German citizens of immigrant origin. It scares me to imagine what could happen if the AFD comes to power. It must never happen again. The revelations about this project have brought back the specter of national socialism, and that frightens a lot of people. The revelations are the work of the investigative media outlet Corrective, and they have sparked massive protests across the country. Working undercover, these journalists gathered evidence that AFD members and neo-Nazis met in secret to discuss what far-right thinkers call a remigration project. In other words, a plan to expel millions of people. This is Martin Zellner, a neo-Nazi. He presented the repatriation plan at this meeting. With this investigation, we understand that this party is a danger to democracy because they do not say what they really think in public. Many voters do not see it or don't want to see it because they don't even want to admit it to themselves. With elections approaching in three East German regions, many voters have been shocked by the journalists' findings. In Thuringia, the AFD already holds 19 out of 90 seats in the regional parliament, and polls suggest the party could win around 30% of the vote, enough for a relative majority. Stefan Dietes is an MP from the far left and works next to AFD members when parliament is sitting. He paints a bleak picture of what a far-right victory here would look like, saying they could really change things for the worse. They would have decision-making power over the proper functioning of civil society in the region, as well as social programs. Would they continue to help the elderly? Would they continue to finance the integration of disabled children in schools? For all these reasons, it's essential to prevent their victory, so they cannot take power and have the ability to restructure society. The far right would also have control over education and cultural institutions, including the Buchenwald concentration camp memorial. The site receives 500,000 visitors each year and plays an essential role in the education of young Germans. Because it was in this region that Adolf Hitler's National Socialist Party won its first electoral victory in the 1930s. And it was in this camp that most of the Nazis' political opponents were imprisoned. The memorial's director says the AFD threatens all the education work and reckoning with history that happens here. The AFD massively practices historical revisionism by downplaying the crimes of National Socialism. And they do it because they want to create a narrative of national greatness. And this national greatness they envision is in total contradiction, of course, with the crimes of the Nazis, which remain an unparalleled infamy from a historical point of view. Haunted by what feels like a return to the past, more and more people in Germany want the AFD banned outright. In the federal parliament, conservative MP Marco Wandowitz has been campaigning for several months to launch a prohibition procedure before the constitutional court. 
To initiate this process, we need the support of 5% of the members of parliament. He's even more determined to meet the challenge after the revelations about the secret meeting. The AFD bodes the worst for this country. Since this process will last for several years, it's important to continue fighting politically against this party while also waging the legal battle. By conducting these two parallel battles, we multiply our chances of succeeding. However, the outcome of this procedure is far from certain. To date, only two parties have been banned in Germany, including a neo-Nazi group in the 1950s. In the meantime, civil society is more mobilized than ever. Nearly one and a half million people took to the streets in mid-January to protest against the AFD.